Special Prosecutor Kese Jabeng has directed the prosecution of three former top officials of the Northern Development Authority and a businessman for inflating a consultancy contract by 4.6 million cities. This is the outcome of his probe into the activities of the Northern Development Authority following allegations by former CEO Dr. Al Hassan Anam Zoya who detected the anomaly with the transaction. You will hear from his lawyer, Martin Pebo, who petitioned the OSP shortly. But first, my colleague Kojo Brace joins me with highlights of the OSP's report on the investigations. Kojo, first, run us through the individuals who have been indicted in this report. Abdul Rahman, who was the CEO of the authority. Stephen Engman, who is deputy CEO, Patrick Sado, also a deputy CEO, and a businessman, Andrew Kinjari, who is chief executive of A and QS Consortium Limited. They have already been slapped with charges, including conspiracy to directly or indirectly influence procurement process to obtain an um, unfair advantage in the actually arranged on January 31. Tell us also about the contract itself that led to the probe, Kojo. So it was a contract awarded to A and P for consultancy services for the supervision of projects in some constituency as part of the uh, iPad project. Now, the contract was worth some 5.2 million cities. The complaint to the special prosecutor was that this sum had been increased to 10.4 million cities through the removal of the page in the initial contract containing the contract sum and the insertion of a replacement page. They add that this 10.4 million cities that they, they bloated the contract it was not it was without a, uh, approval of the public procurement authority, and, and, and that's why the complainant went to the special procedure to Come back. investigate. So, what did the uh, special prosecutor find, Kojo? So, the SP found that the actual executed contract was worth 5.7 million cities. Uh, he again says the new figure of 10.4 should be imposed on the contract at no basis and that the named officials pushed through and approved this amount without the to due process. Right, Kojo Brace is uh, my colleague bringing us part of the highlight of the report of the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor on the uh, Northern Development Authority. Well, Martin Pebo, who petitioned the OSP, says there are other officials at the presidency who should be charged as well. We came back to now, another uh, how many, four, four months for the case to go to court. So it tells you that the special prosecutor needs help. Right now, as I'm talking, some lawyers are putting uh, this in, are signing a petition for us to go present to the president, calling upon him to resource the special prosecutor to give him the establishment budget. Yes, so there's a petition that lawyers are signing because we need to fund the special prosecutor to make it more efficient and more effective. Otherwise, look, the, the, the people looting, they are continuously looting. You know, as we are talking now, they are looting. Tomorrow they will loot. It goes on and on and on. So we need to fund the special prosecutor quickly so that he can clamp down more of such schemes because there are a lot in the system. There are a lot, and they keep on doing this since daily. There's a lady at the office of the president called Clara Napagatia. Yes. So that lady, she's like now de facto minister. She approved the payment too. So I was hoping that she was also going to be charged because as the board, at a minimum, you can say if subordinates bring you anything, you just approve. You should check to see whether there was uh, a contract, there was authorization for such payment. Why did she approve? So Clara uh, Napagat here at the office of the president, the coordinator of the special development initiative, I think uh, she should have been charged as well. Then the budget officer, the director of budget, all the people who approved it. Because it means that minimum, if we cannot prove that they were intentionally involved, then it means they were being negligent. Because, ah, you see, we don't have much money. Somebody brings you a PV in millions of Ghana cities to approve, and you just approve. You don't ask for the document. That's assuming you are not involved. You didn't know. But before you attend your signature, you, don't you ask for, if it were your personal money, wouldn't you check and check before you approve? 
Yeah, the Martin Quibble, he petitioned the OSP for the investigations. Now joining me for more is anti-corruption campaigner Vaita Sazim. I'm grateful for your time, sir. What's your preliminary observations of the outcome of the OSP's investigations into the matter? Well, when any allegation like this come up, we always call on the authorities to expedite investigations into the matter. So I think it's a good development that the special prosecutor has been able to conduct this investigation uh, in a reasonable period of time. If they get exonerated, then they are protected. But if they also are found guilty, then they go through the normal process of the law. And uh, that's the only way we can go. Uh, it appears the matter is already in court, because I've seen a press release to that effect. So we may not, we cannot discuss the details, the content of the case. But at least it's a good development because there have been complaints about the work of the special prosecutor. And uh, so if something like this comes up, we can see that uh, we are moving towards the right direction. At least either for the people to generate themselves or for the state to have its way. Mr. Azim, let's look at the findings of the special prosecutor that actual executed contract was worth 5.7 million, yet the new figure of 10.4 million was superimposed on the contract and that it says had no basis and that the named officials actually pushed through and approved this amount. Uh, I think it's not actual executed project, but the, actual, the contract sum was that 5.2 5 million that you quoted. Because the initial amount contract was revised to reduce the number of constituencies that this contractor was supposed to provide. So the contractor was aware that this was a, the new amount was 5.2 million, or is it 0.7 million, but kept on requiring, requesting for payments that exceeded that amount. And so that is what the auditor, I mean, the, the special prosecutor found out. And that's why he has found it necessary to ask that they be prosecuted for uh, procurement breaches. All these mean to the country's fight against corruption, Mr. Vice Sazim? Well, it has always been that if it takes appropriate action on serious allegations of corruption, you are likely to eliminate or reduce the chances of other people wanting to engage in such acts. So at least if these things come, not just one, not just two, but a number of them are happening, then it means that uh, we are succeeding in the fight against corruption, or that at least we are going in the right direction. Mr. Vaita Sazim, I'm grateful for your time this afternoon. Um, he is an anti-corruption campaigner and former uh, executive director at the GII. Now still on.